All right, so I believe that friendship and learning how to, learning the art of building and maintaining friendship is one of the most important aspects of how we're going to build God's kingdom, or at least prepare to build God's kingdom. So let me explain as best as I can what to do um, and like how to, how to do it, um, how to do it, how to make friendships work. Um, and not only that, like how do they work? What are the rules to friendship? So my example of, of friendship that I always look to is the example of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. And to explain, I was always someone growing up that I did my very best to always reach out to people, to uh, make connections. Somehow I just always knew it was gonna be an important thing for me to, to learn. Um, and so as I did that, I kind of developed this this belief that if it were up to me, that I would I would make as many friends as I could possibly make, and that I would never ever do anything to compromise any of those friendships. Or like I would never leave those friends, I would never lose any of those friends. And I I, I maintained that belief um, all the way up until my mission. And in my mission, it was the first time I was ever challenged on that conviction that I like that goal and that resolution I had made. Um. I had lots of experiences with amazing missionaries and some experiences with missionaries that like were also really good people, but we just didn't see eye to eye. And it's the first time in my life that I had ever met someone that like, um, and this often, this happened multiple times, it's not just like one person. And it's just a lesson for life, like this is just how it goes because we're imperfect, but you meet people that don't get along with you, you meet people that um, that do things differently than you. And for one reason or another, that it's hard to be friends with. And anyway, so as I started having these struggles of of being friends with people that were difficult to be friends with, um, it, it really necessitated me turning to God to look for answers because it, it almost felt as if me losing these friends was a reflection on myself and on my own ability, uh, my own like, my own worth almost. And so, I would um, think long and hard about what can I do better to maintain these relationships, and in what way could I like could I have saved it if I had to go if I could go back and do it again. But one thing I learned as I was reading the New Testament and learning about Jesus is that um, sometimes friends just have to go, um, but that doesn't mean that they can't come back. The example of Jesus Christ is such that he gave up his life not only that like he lived a whole a complete life so like he lived 30 something years which is in my in my mind that's like enough to constitute living a life even if he did die at a young age he lived a whole life um loving people serving people um teaching people doing his best to to improve and lift up his community not only that but he sacrificed himself for the human race he suffered the most painful death imaginable um and not only that um, he also suffered the pains and sicknesses of every single person that had ever lived. He literally made that sacrifice for every single person and still was rejected by many. And so if you can reject the Son of God and you can reject the most pure and loving person that has ever lived and that ever will live on the earth, if you can do that, then I can understand how sometimes you not want to be friends with Christian Alfaro. Um, and so that, that gave me comfort knowing that it's, it's not like my fault, although fault is just fault and blame and all these things are just concepts that are antiquated and that need to be updated. Like nothing is ever anyone's fault. And if anything, it's everyone's fault. Everyone's imperfect. And in any situation where something goes wrong or it's their outcome is less than desirable, there's always blame to be found in every single person involved. What we need to talk about more is the sense of responsibility, not whose fault it is, but who is in a position where they can make it better, regardless of if it's their fault or not, who has the ability, who has two hands, and who has a mind that they can use to make a situation better. Um, basically, who can who can get to work and who can get it done? That's, that's what needs to happen. That's what we need to focus on. And so I still have the same mindset, the same goal, same resolution of, I'm gonna make friends with every single person I meet and if they, but now it's a little bit different. It's like if they, and if they don't like that effort, if they don't appreciate the effort um, and they don't want to be friends, it's nothing I can control. But it, it's no excuse just because one person doesn't want to be friends. It's no excuse to not go out there and make another friend. 
sometimes we get complacent by thinking that we already have a certain group of friends. And what I'm here to tell you is that that's never enough. Um, because they're like the, the idea of friendship is not self-serving. You are not in a relationship just so that you can like a, a friendship relationship, not just so that you can um, escape loneliness and boredom. You're in a relationship because you're offering the best of yourself to other people. And the thing is, is that you can do this more than once, more than twice, more than 10 times. You can do it an infinite number of times. Although there's a difference between having friends and being best friends and basically like a brothers or sisters with someone. Um, like obviously me being with uh, friends of the guys, being a brother, girls being friends with other people's sisters is what I mean. But there are certain people that will be in your life that will, um, that will like you'll have uh, frequent communication with. There's other people that you won't talk to for a long time. Um, and both of those people can add can add benefit can bring light into your life the thing is is that um the goal should be that we should have friends as many friends as we can in as many different places as possible and the the challenge with this is that each friendship has to be genuine or at least that's the goal obviously we can't control the outcome but if uh, if we do our best to ensure that each connection we make with a person is genuine and that it, it is, is um, meaningful, has substance behind it, we can ensure that that, that connection that we make will have some sort of be a, 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 a blessing or benefit in the life of someone else. So yeah, I don't, I don't really think that Jesus, um, I don't really think he ever slowed down in, when it came to making friends. There was never anyone that he didn't, um, like never any opportunity he didn't take to, to make a connection with someone, whether it be a, a blind man on the side of the road or uh, like a leper who was rejected by the community, someone who was destined to die um, for something that wasn't his fault, just like a condition. And for each of these people, the woman with the issue of blood, um, Jesus stopped for them and he made time for them. And the the thing is that he he didn't um, ever see like who knows but there's no recorded instance of him seeing any of those people again um, after that day. But what happens is that those people will never forget how he made them feel and the connection that they felt. Um, obviously, Jesus knows those people. He's aware of them and still knows what like what's going on with them. And so we have to practice and become similar to to the kind of friend that Jesus was. And so to reiterate, um, there's no reason to not make connections with people. And there's no reason to assume that someone does not need um, that, that interaction or that, that someone has enough friends. We should just do our best to be out there, to be open. Um, and the, 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 like the result will be that through our, our acts of kindness and sharing and stuff like that, that God's light can travel from us to other people, from other people to us and to the surrounding people. That's the real goal. It's nothing about us. It's not, it's never about us. It's always about God's children as, as a whole, like the ones that need his help, the ones that need healing um, for them to receive his love. So that's why it's important to make friendships. So as, as best as I can explain, I would say that's the reason why. And if you are someone that struggles with this, all you have to do is first is um, recognize that you're not the only person that might not have the skills that you need to make friends. Second, recognize that no one has ever made it, has ever developed a skill or a talent or become something better than they were without the help of God. And so, you need to be humble enough to know that that it, God doesn't care that you're that you don't like want to, or like not like don't want to. So He doesn't see like He He can see more than you can, and He realizes that you have this this um this instilling this fear in you of reaching out to other people, and that little fear in you is the most insignificant thing to Him. He knows how. Um, if he were to give you some of his power, that, that fear 
that seemed so insurmountable that that fear would disappear. So what he needs for you to do is make a connection with him and he'll give you what he, what you need in order to be that person that can go out there and make friends. So that's it. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking because I, I like to rumble and rumble, just keep going um, like a boulder rolling down a hill. But um, that that's what I have to say about friendship. And so just it's a skill we got to practice. It's it's what will save the world. And I really mean that. I really believe that. So anyway, uh, God bless. Bless you all. Have a great day.